Hello, and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video, we're going to cover how you can upload data to an API destination using a custom ZappySys SSIS component. This is a custom feature you'll be able to use after you download and install the SSIS Power Pack, and you can get that straight from the ZappySys website, which is at zappysys.com, hovering over Products, SSIS Power Pack, and then here to download the software. And I'll be sure to post a link for that in the description below. All right, let's get to it. So I'm going to hop over to Visual Studio where I have a project open. And I'm going to make a new package. So the first thing you'll notice, especially if you've used any of the Zappisys products before, is all these custom components with the ZS prefix over here that you'll get after you download and install the Power Pack. I'm going to drag a new data flow task. And then from within the data flow, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these custom ZappySys dummy data sources. I like this component because whenever you're doing any type of testing or you just want to get some sample data to try something out, you can use this component. There's a few templates already built in, so for this one I'm going to use the customers. And I'm only going to get 10 rows of data. You can say, hey, do you want to access the data in a sample or random order. These are the columns and the data types you'll get. It's just super handy whenever you don't really care what the data is or you're just using random data. So I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to grab my API destination component. And I'm going to connect the two. So when I open this component, the first thing we need to do is create a new connection. So there are some predetermined connector types that ZappySys is already familiar with and has done the coding for on the back end to connect to very easily. Uh, some of them are pretty common, OData, Google Sheets, Zendesk. For this demo, I'm going to use Google Sheets. In the future, you'll be able to search online for some additional options. But like I said, I'm going to stick with a basic example for a Google Sheet. And I'm going to say continue. So I'm not going to use the first thing that you're going to notice is the authentication type and some parameters down here. And I know I jumped straight to this use custom app because I know I'm not using a custom app. So I'm just using a sample Google Sheet I've already made. This is going to be the base URL for Google Sheets whenever you're making an API connector to a Google Sheet. And then I'm going to hop over to a Google Sheet that I've made. And this one you noticed only 10 or so columns. I've already made it to match that customer's dummy data source that I got earlier. And you'll see me copying this sheet ID for my Google Sheet. But notice, super simple. It just has one row of data, though. That's kind of important. And I just filled it in with some dummy data. So I'm going to hop back over to my configuration. I'm going to paste in my sheet ID. And now we need to get the tokens for ZappySys to talk to this Google Sheet. So I'm going to hit Generate Tokens. It's going to try with a little Google Plus browser. I don't really want that. I want my system browser. So it says, hey, that didn't get any tokens. Do you want to use the system browser? Yes. So that's my Gmail account. I know that I trust the Power Pack. So I'm going to allow those permissions, those permissions, and then one more permissions. And there it is. It extracted successfully, and it says, hey, do you want to save these? Sure, I'll save them. I'll just throw them in the desktop for now and save it there. So that's it. I can just hit test connection, and this connection works. This thing is going to talk to my Google Sheet very easily. There's some other tabs up here that you notice you can use some custom configuration if you want to. But like I said, this works, and I'm going to stick with that. So now that I've created my connection, now I can do the configuration. So these are the sheets in that Google Sheet. I'm going to pick my Customer Data tab. Because if I hop back over, you'll notice that my sheet tab is customer data. So first thing to notice from here is the operation. 
you can insert new data, you can update data. For this first example, I'm gonna do update. And then down here, you can see some other parameters, such as we need to put in our sheet ID. And there are some optional parameters if you wanted to do some row by row operations, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna take our dummy data that we've made and put it in this Google Sheet. There's one more tab that you might wanna take a look at, output settings. You can create an output file to make a log of what you're doing. For this example, I'm gonna say don't make an output tab. So, next I'm going to go to this mappings, and it says, hey, I just mapped you eight columns. And that's because the columns in my dummy data source were already the exact same names as my Google Sheets. It's actually 16 columns. So that's perfect. That's all that I want. Last is the response output. If I hadn't checked that other box that said don't make any output data there would be some other options here where you can configure if you want to know how many rows were updated how many columns were updated and so have you so just know that that's an option and then there's two other tabs just some general info about this and some error handling but we're keeping it super simple I'm gonna hop back to the settings and I'm gonna click this preview data and there's my one row. That's a little test connection to my Google Sheet to say, hey, can I talk to it? What does the sheet look like right now? That looks great. So that's it. I've made my API destination component. And I'm going to say OK. So right now, when I click Run, it's going to take this dummy data and put it into this API destination. But remember, I picked this update option. So it literally is going to overwrite the Google Sheet. So that one row is going to disappear, and I'm going to have my new 10 rows of data from this dummy source. Let's try it. So there we go. We got 10 rows. I'm going to hop back over to the Google Sheet. There we go. I have my 10 rows of data. Perfect. Love it. But let's say you didn't want to override it every time. I'm going to change this setting to be insert. I'm gonna add my sheet ID. And now I'm gonna say okay. It says, hey, do you want to refresh any of the configurations? Yeah, let's do it. And now when I hit start, I'm still getting 10 rows of dummy data from that data source. And it's still gonna put those 10 rows into the Google Sheet. But this time, it's going to append the data. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So that's it. That's how super easy it is to upload data to an API destination, like a Google Sheet, using this custom Zappy Sys API destination component, and how flexible it is. If you want to give it a try, but you haven't already downloaded the Power Pack, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget, the link is in the description below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the ZappySys YouTube channel to get more updates and SSIS tips and tricks like this in the future.